Uh, now he wants to give us some specific instances of God's uh, sovereign hand over evil. Scripture, right? he says, is not content to express God's sovereignty over evil in kind of broad generalities, but indicates specific instances of his sovereignty over evil. And, of course, you know, the the big one that we all <laughs> think of right. is Job's suffering. Right. right? He's probably the most well-known example. Yeah, because we can look at Job and say, oh, well, at least my life's not that bad. Yeah. That's, that's how we feel better. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not what Job says. Job acknowledges the sovereignty of God in giving him all that he has and then summarily taking it away. Naked I came out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he tells this to his wife. His yeah. wife, after you know this calamity had had occurred, you know, Children killed, his um, livestock uh, stolen. You know, I, 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 all of his worldly possessions yeah. basically are gone. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I, I believe kind of the, the the take on Job is that he's kind of this uh, um, a regional king. Uh, uh, that's why he has uh, so much stuff. So you know, he's he's uh, pockmarked and in the in the ash field, he's scraping himself with a, 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 a pottery shard and. And then his friends come out, and it gets even worse. So, mm-hmm. so even even within this, he is still saying, "Look, the Lord gives, and Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord." So, not even Job, even though he he recognizes the sovereignty of God in this and allowing it to happen, he still is saying that um, God's um, um, name is is still be able to be blessed. And he's not saying, "Well, God God uh, did this evil to me, and and he's culpable. He's morally culpable." He does not charge the Almighty with wrongdoing in verse right. 22, one, right. uh, in chapter 1, but blesses his name in an act of simple worship. Right. So one would say, oh, Job, you know, all this is evil has happened, and you're saying that it's from the Lord? Uh, yes. <laughs> right. And the scripture says that, he, you know, in doing this, Job has not charged the Almighty with wrongdoing. Mm-hmm. That's what verse 20, 23 says, right? And he didn't even have the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> and so Christensen tells us that here we're, you know, this is where many are uh, befuddled, right? How does God respond, right? Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Job doesn't uh, charge God with evil. So how does God respond? You know, is he dismayed by the tragedy of deaths of Job's sons and daughters and that sort of thing? Does he think that these things are out of hand? Has Satan gone too far, right? <laughs> should, should he have put a tighter leash on him kind right. of thing, right? If any of this is true, if that's true, then why does God instigate a second wave of calamity? Right, right, right. That, that, that's the the boils and 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 the, the friends come out. <laughs> so note how God frames the second challenge is to Satan. Job still holds fast his integrity, although you incited me against him, destroy him without reason. That's uh, chapter two, verse three. God puts forth the challenge, yet it is Satan who incites God against the innocent man. God accepts broad responsibility for Job's calamity, but definitely distances himself from moral liability. Why he he says, uh, you know, um, I will allow this to happen, and you know, Satan is in God's presence, and he's asking for permission. And um, I, I've I've always attributed more to to my reading of A. W. Pink than to, to Luther, but the 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 quote is that even Satan is God's Satan. He's he's a creature. He's he's not he's not in an arm wrestling match with God, but he's a a, a creature made in in um in God's power that. Uh, fell and has a specific purpose that God uses him for. And this is Mm -hmm. one of those purposes. Mm -hmm. Nothing is left to chance. God knows full well that Job will retain his moral integrity and refuse to curse him in face of murder and mayhem. Uh, I mean, that's what, what um, God's, uh, uh, you know, bet here is with Satan. He's not saying like, Oh, uh, you know, I think this might be the the Let's case. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's not rolling the dice on, on Job. Yeah, <laughs> and it's yeah. in fear and eating us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and and two, you know, well, okay, say that's the case. Well, what are the stakes? The stakes are Satan's saying, "Listen, this this is this is um, you you, you bless him. Of course, he, he's going to de- declare you good and holy and righteous, uh, but." Uh, you know, it, let calamity come to him, let evil come to him, and he'll curse your name at the first thing. It's God's character, his nature that Satan is impugning here. He's mm-hmm. he's attacking. Uh, th- that that's the end goal is that that um, oh you, you know if 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 you're so so good, let let you be good even the evil. And here's a perfect example: someone who has it all, 
take it all away right. and and your you know your um a uh, creature who who knows you the best that is offering sacrifices for his children in case they do anything uh, uh, evil or wrong, but they're still having family meals together, then then your character will be impugned by him. Well, th- that's the attack that even Satan in that passage is acknowledging, acknowledging the stake. The stake is uh, God's character and nature comporting with yeah. both good and right. evil. It, it's kind of like, you know, he says, uh, the only reason why you do good to him is because, you know, he does this stuff for you, right? But if he didn't do this stuff for you, then you wouldn't do good to him. So, he, cha- you know, it's, it's, it is a challenge to God's nature, right? right? And God is going to say, you know, well, what we see in the, in, the, uh, in the account is God does good and evil, and it doesn't matter. He's still God, and Job obviously, you know, goes through this particular ordeal, right? right? So this isn't a, a roll of the dice. Nothing is left to chance. God knows full well that Job will retain his moral integrity and refuse to curse him in face of murder and mayhem. The fact that he declares the end from the beginning helps that out as well. <laughs> uh, because he has predetermined the outcome, Job passes the test, but his wife does not. She says, do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die. Thanks, hon. Appreciate yeah. <laughs> that. Notice she doesn't say curse Satan and die. Yeah. Yeah, and that, so that's really interesting. He, uh, Christensen tells us that humans intuitively turn to God when calamity strikes. Right? There are no atheists in foxholes. That's right, because <laughs> they understand that they're, they're in their heart of hearts that God controls the events of history. Job remains unmoved by the seething anger, you know, building up in his wife's heart. You speak as one of the foolish women, he tells her, right? Uh, shall we receive notice, good from God, and shall we not receive evil? Right. That's what he tells her, right? In, in light of, of everything that's known from the fall onward. Yeah, yeah. And so once again, you know, we, we, uh, Christensen tells us that we might expect many readers to think that Job has uttered something impertinent, right? That somehow Job has blasphemed receiving evil from right. God, right? Oh, no. <laughs> Yet He's ins- failed already. <laughs> the inspired author tells us this. In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. There, there it is, right? In other words, he believes that um, God to be responsible for the evil that transpires, but not morally culpable mm-hmm. or blamable for the evil, right? right? So even Job's brothers and sisters understand this robust theology of providence. The inspired writer records their faithful the- theological thoughts. They showed him sympathy and comforted him from all the evil the Lord had brought upon him, in verse 11. And all that unfolds in the book of Job, Satan is never mentioned on the lips of the human participants. Yahweh alone is regarded as the author of Job's calamity, yet he remains free of moral culpability. Yeah. And so I think the, that's where we'll, we'll, we'll stop. And yeah. so, you know, from, from this um, uh, Job passage, we're, we're kind of seeing where Christians going to go by saying God is transcendent. Uh, his ways are not our ways. We can't think like God because only God is God. And so we have to um, face the testimony of Scripture and see what it says of what God reveals. And part of it is that God is both responsible for the evil that occurs, but he doesn't get down in the, the dirt right. dirty. He's not morally culpable for it. Right, right. right. He, he allows it. He accounts for it. He, you know, uh, decrees it. But that doesn't mean that he is blamable for the evil. Uh-huh. Each person does that. In fact, in this instance, Satan does that, you know, on his own. Right. 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 And so, so th- this is kind of like the, 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 the Dawn soap of, you know, you, you <laughs> put it on your hand and you put, try and put the grease on it or the dirt and it slips off. It's just not able to, to, to stick to the, the surface because of the nature of the soap. Yeah. The nature of God does not allow him to be morally culpable to this. And so uh, that might not be satisfying to you in this chapter. Chapter nine will deal a lot more with that. So yeah. if you're like, oh, I'm, I'm just not satisfied with this explanation. Yeah. What we're, what, what, what Christensen's doing is he's offering the biblical testimony to say, what does the Bible say about evil and God in relationship? Well, it seems to say he brings it forth, but he's also not morally culpable. And so We'll look at a few more examples and things like divine hardening and, and so on and so forth in the next episode as we finish up uh, chapter eight, walking through the Bible's dark forest.